Welcome to the final episode of our Anyone Can Wear the Mask series, everyone. We have a really great discussion with Jeff Stormer this episode, along with some fantastic fanfic. But before we get to that, some announcements. First up, this Friday I will be streaming more of my Chimera campaign for A Tale of Twinkle and Awe. Our heroes are currently in an ancient undercity trying to avoid eldritch horrors while keeping their secret identities safe from their greatest enemies. It's going to be a really fun and spooky time. You can get there by going to twitch.chimera.games at 7.30 p.m. Central Time this and every other Friday. Also... A reminder that this is the last episode of January. We will be recording our next guest soon for February's series. So keep an eye out for that come the first Monday of next month, which I believe is the first of February. We don't really have much else to announce right now. So let's just get right into this remarkable discussion with a Jeff Stormer. Enjoy. Our discussion episode. Last time we created a hero, a city, and a villain for anyone can wear the mask. This episode we're going to discuss the character creation process. We are thrilled to welcome back Jeff Stormer, the designer of this game. Jeff, do you want to reintroduce yourself for everyone and remind people where they can find you and tell us a little bit about the city that you made? Yeah, uh, so my name is Jeff Stormer. I'm a podcaster, game designer, and the unofficial official LARP designer of the Olive Garden Restaurant. Um, you can find my work at jeffstormer.com. You can find anyone can wear the mask at jeffstormer.itch.io slash mask. And the city that we made last session was the uh, old Kirby City. It was the historical district of a larger metropolis called Kirby City that was uh, nothing if not magical, right? Like there was magic woven into <laughs> every part of the city. Uh, the layout of the buildings was done in a geometric pattern to capture magical ley lines. And there is old there's old libraries with catacombs and hidden mm -hmm. archives with all sorts of forbidden knowledge. There's ancient evils living underneath the uh, long forgotten caves, sites of an ancient battle of like a historical battle. It's a city with history and it's a city with magic. And those are all things that are very close to my heart. So I was excited to get to, to explore them in play. Yeah. Oh also ghosts. So, also there were ghosts. Know. Also and ghosts. Also a pesky spider. Also a pesky spider. <laughs> well, he has spider teenager. team. <laughs> yep. We did not get to explore spider team nearly enough. Oh, but w just knowing that they are there uh, is absolutely fantastic. Worth the price of admission, honestly, absolutely. to just make spider team. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, well, we might be able to get into spider team a little bit during our fanfic portion of, oh, yeah, of this true. segment. So. Uh, let's keep that in our pockets. Um, <laughs> Amelia, why don't you tell us about the hero that you made? Um, I made a hero that we did not name. I realized uh, that. We should probably name them. We, I we mean, didn't, we, we could. We didn't throw I'm out terrible any at names. names. That's the part that I just don't do, um, we, which I yeah. should have thought through before I made a character creation podcast because <laughs> um, I'm bad at naming things. Uh, they are a magical superhero specializing in teleportation. We did decide that they have a staff like Gandalf to fight the Balrogs that clearly live under the caves. Mm -hmm. um, and they are not um, totally in control of their powers yet. They're still, they're still learning. Um, and they're going to have to figure that out pretty quick if they're going to fight this ancient evil that is the villain of this story, Ryan. Mm. Yeah, that, that's my fault. Um so the villain that we created um, that uh, has been around for hundreds, if not thousands of years, 
um, also magical based. And they figured out how to take the magic power of the city for themselves. They effectively cracked the code and began a 100 year ritual um, that was nearing its completion. Um, and I believe we decided they succeeded um, at this during the, mm-hmm. the downfall portion. Mm-hmm. They do. They do succeed. And then in the uprising oh. portion, our hero comes back and takes them down and undoes their plan and mm-hmm. the, saves the city. Yeah, they they all of the other uh, things that the hero had to take care of before the downfall happened were all distractions that this uh, ancient immortal person uh, had set in motion to <gasps> Is spider team working heroes. for you? Absolutely. spider team was created by me. Whoa. Yeah. So I, I think, uh, yeah, oh, there's there's so many layers to this, Jeff. My goodness. It was, a, <laughs> it was an eventful hour. It was. Really. We did a lot with like two turns. Mm-hmm. <laughs> OK, well, should we go ahead and uh, dive into our D20 for your thoughts segment? Mm, absolutely. absolutely. All right. D20 for your thoughts. All right. In this segment, we want to talk to our guests about their thoughts on the character creation process and how it relates to this system and to other games. Uh, But first, we'd like to get to know our guests a little bit better before we begin. And since we didn't cover this last time, I did check. Uh, Can you tell us how you got into RPGs in the first place? Absolutely. Um, I got into them at the bright old age of eight years old. Uh, my brothers and I found a copy of a like a worn book at a garage sale called Middle Earth Role Playing. Uh, I had been a fan of like role playing video games. And so like we were all like, oh, this is like those video games that we play. It's not like those video games. That no. we play. That's how Ryan's story went, too. Exactly. <laughs> this is not uh, the video games. Uh, <laughs> Middle Earth Role Playing is not a game designed for an eight year old. <laughs> <laughs> it is not a game that I that you I read at eight years old and went, oh, yes, I see how these pieces work. It's not a game I read at 30 and went, oh, yeah, I see how these pieces work. <laughs> um, one day I hope to be old enough where I read this book and go, all right, I see it. I get it. Now, but I'm not there yet. So who is to say? When um, you do, we'll have you back on and you can maybe try and explain it to us. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> if we're still making this show in like 60 years when if we're, we're still all... making this show in about 45 years i think we'll yeah. get there maybe well, we we'll have, have enough it. content to cover us until then so um so yeah that and then like it kind of stuck in my head and i kind of uh never stopped thinking about what about imagination games but with complex sets of rules <laughs> <laughs> What if we put limits on your imagination? <laughs> what if, what if we, what if, what if, what if? Anything you can imagine, but not that. <laughs> but, but, put, yeah, but have guidelines. What if, <laughs> what if the beauty and wonder of human imagination, but with railings? Yep. Let's think about that. <laughs> and yet here we all are doing this. Honestly. Like, we, when you think about it, you're like, what a stupid idea. Like, children have brilliant imaginations and can do what like. We just. <laughs> limitless things and then as adults we're like yeah but what if i made it so that you you couldn't do those things yeah what if i what if i what if i restricted my imagination uh-huh. in really narrow ways mm-hmm. and here we are 30 years later like right. it's the only way to describe it it's- absolutely <laughs> i'm glad that you stuck with it i'm glad that even though you got that book and you were like i don't know what this is this that you nonsense. were still like you're still like, but there's something here. There, there was something. Kernel. There was something about it that like stuck in my brain, and I think it might have been that like at the same time, like at least one cartoon had released a Dungeons and Dragons episode, and I was like, is that what this is supposed to be like? Oh. That makes way more sense than what I'm reading in this book. <laughs> <laughs> at no point have they re- they rolled on three separate critical hit tables. Oh no! <laughs> wow. I'm gonna have to look at that book. That sounds it's, like it's so. Do much. you still have it? I I I we don't have the actual book anymore. It got okay. destroyed. Oh, like no. okay. it it was a book that was passed between four kids between the ages of eight and twelve. That book didn't survive. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Mm-mm. 
<laughs> but like I have the PDF of it and every once a year I reopen it and I'm like, all right, it, it's it's my it's it, it's the project that I come back to. I'm like, this is it. It's my it's my Hades is the only way to describe it. I'm like, this is the run. This, this is, is the it. run. <laughs> I got it this time. I've, I've got my strat. I've got my strategy. Okay. Coming soon, All right. uh, well, then, Jeff Stormer's hack of Middle Earth. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is Jeff Stormer's any percent any percent speed run. Um, we're yep. gonna open this book and we're gonna skip right past this section. All right, I understand this. I understand that. Wait. Have no, you turned on God mode though? Yeah. If only <laughs> God mode is I have the designer of the game in front of me. And at times I can just go, why? What is that? What am I doing here? What are you <laughs> Wait, talking I don't about? Understand. <laughs> Where this this list of skills that you're referring to is not in this book. What am I doing? here? <laughs> That's like um, what was the when we did our Deadlands episode and it was like yep. reference this page in the Savage Worlds book and then you go to that page in the Savage Worlds book and that's not what that page is. And it's like, what are you, what are you talking exist. about here? Like that's that's God mode is that you can have the designer to be like, is this a typo? What are you doing here? Talk me through this because I'm not I'm not here with you, my friend. Were you mm-hmm. drunk? Do I need to also be drunk to understand yeah, this? I'll, I'll do it. I got beer in the fridge. If I need to, I'll hit it. Just tell me. Just let me know. Just tell me what I need to do. Oh, goodness. <laughs> you play a lot of role playing games. I do. Um, I, I've, I've played a game from time to time. It's like here and there. Uh, you dabble. I dabble. When you make characters, what is your process for doing that? Like, what kind of things do you do first? What kind of things do you think about when you make those characters? Well, uh, I mean, I, I think uh, the first thing that I usually do is I, I ask Aaron and I'm like, what thoughts do you have about this character? And <laughs> yes. then we spend about an hour riffing on this character. I'm, I'm wearing my shirt right now. Yes. <laughs> um, I, that's usually no. The, the truth is, like, I mean, as much as I, I, I will plug all my fantasy children here because I think like it is a pretty good picture of my process. But like, mm. yeah. I do really lean hard on like story, like which seems obvious, but like I am a big tropes and emotional truth guy. If you couldn't tell by the last hour that we spent playing the game that I wrote that up at all. (laughs) So like I will I will sit down and I'll be like, what story does this game want to play? Like, what is the what is the story that this game wants me to tell? And like, what is going to be an interesting approach what is an interesting riff on that theme that's still going to bring out what is re- uh, resonant to me about that theme right like what is a direction that i can take this that's still going to highlight what makes this thing special mm-hmm. while also allowing me to like take it in a different direction mm-hmm. i think that's really valuable though like mm-hmm. uh, we ask that a lot um it's like what is this game meant to do what kind of stories is this game meant to tell and I think that there's a lot of value in looking at that when you go to create a yeah. character to not just say like, oh, here's the mechanically optimal thing or here's like the personal arc that I want to yeah. have. But like what kind of story is this game set up to tell and how can I like play with that or against that yeah. to interesting ends? And I think because I think like and and, I, and this is partially me coming at it from someone who has designed games, but like you are writing this for a reason like there is something that you are imparting to the reader the player the listener whatever like you are imparting something of yourself there's a reason that you went through the creative process right like we had talked last episode about like it's a long process it's a challenging process It, it is a thing that takes time and energy you have done that for a reason and as a consumer i want to find i want to experience that reason right like i i want to I, 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 we had talked a lot last episode about like games as an expression of someone's one passionate thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to, a lot of how I interpret games and how I like intake games and how I like, uh, interact with games is I want to feel and learn more about your one special, like your one passionate thing. And so a lot of times, like that's kind of what I'm leaning for in games is like, okay, If this is what you're going, if this is what I should be going for, I want to go for this and like I'll put my spin on it and I'll say like this is these are the adjacent things that I'm passionate about, but I want to put them into that that larger context. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely. So how do we think character creation in this game stacks up to other systems that we've played? You you Um, tell me, but no, I will be fiercely judging your answer. Yeah, no, no. (laughs) 
<laughs> um, I mean, I've definitely played a lot of games that have like a collaborative character creation. That's that's certainly something that we've done plenty of. Mm. Um, the way that this one works is that it seems to me is that like character creation is the game. Like that's mm-hmm. like you are slowly learning who you are over the course of the game. We only answered like one or two things before mm-hmm. we jumped into it. Yeah. Um, and I, I think just the way that the pieces interact with each other is a lot mm-hmm. stronger than almost any other game that I've played too. That it's not mm-hmm. just like, you know, like we are a, a group or a party and like there's one question about a relationship here and mm-hmm. there is like yeah, everything that you do, like that, the cards you pull, the dice you roll, whatever, like affect how I do my thing. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, um, which is not a thing that I've like had such a like quite so interactive of an experience with before. Yeah, I can't I can't think of another game that I've played where you've got this sort of like um um it's almost this the symbiotic relationship mm-hmm. between yeah. all three parts. Yeah. Where without one of the parts uh, the whole system kind of doesn't work as well mm-hmm. in a way cuz you've got the hero, you've got the villain, you got the city. Like you could have the hero and the villain without the city, but then that takes away the heart of the game, mm-hmm. right? And then you've got the hero in the city, but then where's the villain coming to play? And um, and the villain in the city is just you know four citizens, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like having those three very separate uh, pieces that that fit together perfectly to tell these stories. Um, and and starting off with such a like almost ambiguous uh beginning like we we threw out four sections of a city and mm-hmm. four threats right away mm-hmm. and like kind of an idea of what we knew our hero to be like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the fact that character creation does progress through the whole game and we got just like a little a little niblet of what the actual game is like by going through one turn knowing you do that what like almost 52 times or so yeah if you're take. playing with a, if you're playing with a full deck you're gonna do that uh somewhere between 25 and 50 times because there's a mechanic where if you cause collateral damage you discard you put a card aside like you discard a card similar yeah. to how you would with the downfall except that card can then be shuffled back into the deck whereas it can't in the downfall but like, yeah, you're doing it. You're doing it a lot. You're doing it 20 plus 20 plus times. Yeah. Over the and course then, of the game. And then if you draw the right cards, you can have up to 10 like reoccurring threats. Mm-hmm. And my goodness, uh, it's it's so interesting how the it, it's almost like a character creation machine mm-hmm. <laughs> where the more you turn the crank, the more juicy character bits oh, yeah. uh, will come to light. Mm, it's a character juicer. I see. It's character yeah. juicer. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's 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 funny that you say that because uh, the marketer Jeff is putting on his cap right now. One of the hu- biggest, one of the things that most excited me about promoting this game, and something that I did a lot of, was I reached out to a lot of different superhero themed actual play podcasts. Because something that I think the game does super like really, really cool, like really well. And that's really cool is it creates like you said, it is a character creation engine, both because you get to know this hero, but Mm. also because like you leave the game with like 50 some locations. Yeah. Tons of different people, groups, factions, enemies, occurrences, events, things that have a history to your city. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was like, I want to take this to Protean City Comics. Like, I want because like I want like I want Brandon and James to sit down with this game and be like, here's here's 50 look. Here's 50. Like we've played we've played in this setting for five years. Here's 50 more locations. And then you can then you just have those those locations come back forever. Like that for me was such an something that I wanted so specifically because I'm like. Now you get to be like, here's a diner. We created this diner. We know this diner exists. And mm-hmm. here's the diner where our heroes hang out now. Like we have yeah. a name for this place. And it it creates that kind of history where like, you know, it's it, it's something that I love in superhero comics is like you see a location 
Mm -hmm. And then that location becomes part of the lore, right? It becomes part of the hero's world and it just becomes a place that you come back to later, right? Like it is, it's, it's something that I was really passionate about. Like as a character creation engine, I was like, I want people playing superhero campaigns in other systems to take this game Mm -hmm. and use it to like, build a little piece of their world. I was going to so say, like, if on, anybody yeah. was, like, trying to start a superhero actual play, like, starting with this game mm-hmm. as, like, your episode zero or whatever, like, would be phenomenal because it just yeah. gives you so many pieces yeah. to start with. Yeah, you've got with. locations and people. And and I think, like, the people is something that I, I was really excited about. I think it's something that, like, for me, like, that is a part of the game that is kind of, I think it's unique, right? Like, it's a part mm-hmm. of the game that's unique is, like, Superhero games by nature are focused on superheroes and supervillains, right? Like, Mm -hmm. and I say this with nothing but love for the game masks. You create superheroes and you create villains like those are the things that you create. Those are the things that the GM is like encouraged. You're encouraged to push them into those. You're you're encouraged to push them into like regular situations around like teen stuff. So you probably Mm -hmm. know their teachers, their 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 parents, their teachers. But like Mm -hmm. you don't know who runs the diner, right? Yeah. You might have a scene at the diner, but like that diner has a story. And that was mm-hmm. something that I was really excited about with anyone can wear the mask is like you you make a place that has a story, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's that like if I'm introducing a theme park, I get to create a theme park. I yeah. get to talk about the people that live it, that work at that theme park. I get to talk about the people that are going to the theme park. It's why my favorite role in the game is the city is because I love make is because I I love ordinary details right yeah. like yeah it's easy for me if i'm running if you're running a game it's easy to be like all right the heroes you're meeting at your local diner mm-hmm. my favorite thing is being the city and being like no no that's reggie's diner that is that is a specific diner and the reason you go to reggie's diner is because they have the cheapest breakfast in town and they will give it to you and they'll be a little mean to you but it's worth it because the food is good and it's that cheap. Like yeah. there's this tiny it's it's those tiny little details that I think make things come to life. And I think mm-hmm. I love that this is a game that like makes you make those details. Yeah. And I, I'm picturing like you can you can start off with this, but turn the crank just a little bit, get mm-hmm. a few rounds in, start with that base, jump in. Mm -hmm. And then once you're done with that arc, turn the crank a little bit more, play Mm -hmm. a little bit more Mm -hmm. of this game and and then see what more locations and then jump into the next arc. You know, what's really cool about that, like as an idea, is that once you flip that downfall, you have a crossover event. Yeah. Like you have an event that is so big and like a huge part of the city is damaged and you're like. Well, I got to know what these teen heroes are up to as our Superman figure is like dealing with the ramifications of this. Yeah. Like you get to you, you build that event. And you're like, all right, here's four issues. We've we've laid out four cards. We've got a little bit of a story. Then when you flip that Joker, it's well, now I have to see how that interacts with everybody because it's that big, like earth shattering yeah. event. Right. Yeah. This is funny, though, because so much of this just echoes all of the things that you told us when we did our like character creation episode mm-hmm. with you and Aaron, which is just like, I'm fascinated by these small details. Like, where did you get those boots? Like, what does that it's mean? What, what does about. that tell me about? And so like hearing you pull that into the game design part of this too is really mm-hmm. cool. Just I the must way be that, myself like, at all times. Yeah. <laughs> Unapologetically yourself. That's, exactly. I love that mm-hmm. in people though. It's just like, yes, do your thing and like be great at it and be passionate about it. Like mm-hmm. that makes for the best products the best Mm -hmm. you know like the best games the best podcasts like is just when you're excited about something and you're like this is the this is the thing that i love and i'm gonna make it something yeah Mm -hmm. Uh, it's very good so we always ask this um i I don't know that it really applies to this game very well um but how does the process of character creation reinforce the feel of this game i think that it doesn't really work here because character creation is this game like, that's the whole thing. I, I think I, I I do have an answer for this. Mm. Okay. Like, I have thoughts on it, which is, I think, like, given that the game is specifically about the kind of hero that protects a particular space, it's it's kind of what we were just saying about that city role. Like, mm-hmm. y- it's it's it builds it builds a familiar turf, right? Like it builds it builds home territory. And it's mm. it's that it's that it's that it I was having a conversation with my friend Riley 
and they had asked when you when do you describe yourself as from somewhere like how long have how long do you live somewhere before you describe yourself as from somewhere Mm -hmm. and increasingly i realized my answer is like when you can name all of the places Mm. in really specific terms (laughs) you know what i mean like Anybody can say that anybody can say that Lee's Deli is on 47th in Baltimore and Philadelphia. I'm the one that's going to tell you that Lee's Deli has the best vegan cheesesteak in Philadelphia. And that's where you go and you get it. And and Mr. Lee is the nicest guy in the neighborhood and he's a sweetheart. Like it's 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 when you have when you have that answer for every spot in your neighborhood, like that's mm-hmm. when you're from a place. And like this game creates a place that you're from because the city character is constantly pushing to create these little spaces. Mm-hmm. So we ask this question all the time as well. And um, Ryan feels guilty every time we ask it. <laughs> I do. Uh, but I'm, I, but I'm I love listening. The, I love the answers that we get from this, especially when we're talking to the designers of the games. Um, what do you think is one of the biggest flaws of character creation in the system? And what do you think is one of the best parts? Um, I know what I think the flaw is, and it's something that like, I think is, I, I, I think of it, I think it's, I think there's a mechanical thing that I've run into with it that I, I, I wouldn't change. I don't think there's anything about it mm-hmm. I would want to change, but I definitely see that there's one weirdness about the game. Mm-hmm. And that is, uh, that the hero doesn't, if, if you're not like actively taking notes in a journal, the hero doesn't technically do like there's not an action, mm-hmm. if that makes okay. sense. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And and part of that is by design because the hero gets the coolest moments of narration. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Like the hero, every time they sp- the hero speaks up, they get to do something absolutely cool. Mm-hmm. And they also are traditionally supposed to be taking these notes. But I realized in recording about a half a dozen actual play podcasts of this in which the podcast itself was sort of the journal of it all. I was like, oh, the hero's not going to get to like the hero isn't act isn't doing a thing. There's not like mm-hmm. an active there's not a gameplay mechanic for the hero other than kind of taking notes. And like it's an odd oddness about the game that I like. I I I, I, I do like that the hero doesn't have that gameplay portion because they get all the coolest moments. Mm -hmm. So here's my thing, too, is that, like, I would never pick to play the hero. Like, I am eternally the villain, always, whenever I can be. However, I picked the hero because I like taking notes. (laughs) Like, I am in any group that I play with. I am the designated note taker. Like, I wrote them down. I have exported them Mm -hmm. to my drive. I have, like, they are there. Um, So for me... That is a plus. That's, <laughs> like, that is something I that, that I never stopped to consider. I like taking the notes. I drew a little cave with some like little flames coming out of it. This, um, you have just brightened my day. Like, it's hey, a, that's something that I never stopped and considered that there are people that for whom taking notes would be the most exciting part oh, of the yeah. game. And B, that you drew a little cave has made my day better. It's um, it's not very pretty, but it's, I don't know if I can see yep. it, like a little cave oh, and little cave. some little Makes flames. And I noted like the, the suits. I love it. I love it. It's great. It, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. Because it was a source of real anxiety for me in the run up to releasing this game was I was like are people going to get mad that one of the roles is the note taking role but you have convinced me that that is not the case no as the person who is always the designated note taker in a group I'm for it well especially if you're the one that's uh that's mapping out the city and Mm -hmm. like the areas where the locations are effectively stored within Mm -hmm. the city um I I think that's that's a huge role and a Mm -hmm. a huge like narrative uh role especially if you're going to blend this game with with other games uh it's saying what's nearby sure that 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 makes a ton of sense Mm -hmm. yeah it doesn't have like the tactile part of it or like the sort of randomization part of it that i think a lot of us feel like playing is sort of made up of of, like drawing the cards or rolling the dice or whatever um but as somebody who is constantly taking the notes anyway i was like i'm more than happy to fill mm-hmm. this role like that that works for me i like doing that that makes me extremely happy mm-hmm. and and also i'm i'm the type of person that loves like the uh the theoretical matchups mm-hmm. of superheroes and like how would this hero use their power to defeat this other hero and then using that that 
that brain process of like how how would this hero's abilities apply to the situation mm. and and how would this hero's abilities apply to the results mm-hmm. that we got uh is extremely uh delicious to me and <laughs> Like just that that's just like, ooh, yes, give me more, 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 more. I love that so much. Yeah. So I, I don't think you have a problem with it, but Thank you. You I can definitely cl- see you like how that today. can be. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I can definitely I can, see I can, how I can you see, can get yeah. there and be like, okay, you know, that is kind of a weird role, but rest assured, some of us like it. <laughs> that's that's all I needed to hear. <laughs> <laughs> So, so what do you think um, is the probably the best part then? What do you think is the best part? The oh. Feed feed me. This is this is yes, my part. Tell you. Well, I thought <laughs> I that no taking was great. You no. reward this. <laughs> tell me I'm great. <laughs> That's. I mean, that is honestly what this podcast is for: uh, is to have designers on and be like, "Hey, your game, it's pretty great. It's pretty um, great. It's all I want. It's pretty great." <laughs> no, That's why I, do I mean, this. <laughs> no, honestly, I think that. Like, the interaction between the different roles was really exciting to me. Like, it's not a thing that I've seen before. Um, mm. Just, like, the the way that they are directly intertwined and playing as, like, parts of a story instead of specific characters was just, like, really... It was new and exciting for me. Absolutely. That makes me really happy. Because it is fun. something that I really love about the game, is the way that, like... It's such a tight, it's such a tight circular wheel, right? Like it's yeah. such a, once, you, and, 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 and I think you'll hear it in some of the, the, some of the actual plays that we recorded. I think the, I think the one shot that James and I recorded, we did the two player like version of the game. I think you'll hear, mm-hmm. you hear that wheel just, mm. cause once we kind of work through the rhythm of it, you hear us just, we'll put down a card and be like eight of eight of spades. All right, here's where we are. And James will, and. Hey, because this is James is an incredible improviser, but he'll jump in and be like, and here's why it's in danger. And once we work through, like once we get once we're both familiar enough with the mechanics, we are just going through yeah. cards because we're like, we're like, OK, I can set up the location immediately. I know exactly what's going to put that spot in danger. And it just mm-hmm. watch it buzz quicker and quicker. And it oh goodness, it, it creates a really beautiful, like circular arc. Well, it, also because you invited like the other biggest Superman fan. <laughs> Also true. To play this game with <laughs> also you. Also true. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like I knew what I was doing. Almost. Exactly. Like you had that play around. But no, I, I think that there's like a definite feedback loop there yeah. of like, you have a cool idea and then it does something cool to my thing, which then does something cool to Ryan's thing. Like it's this constant circular motion. And that's yeah. like really things what getting I wanted, bigger and like, bigger and bigger. I wanted that. I wanted that to feel seamless and I wanted mm-hmm. there to not be that kind of hiccup. And I think it works really, really well. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And I think I think because of that symbiotic relationship, you've got um, like baked in emotional attachment that um, not too many games get to that sort of level. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Just by playing the game, usually you have to kind of like shoehorn it in effectively. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this, it, it feels like it builds and builds and builds to like an emotional sort of release when when that that first joker hits and you know half the half of the stuff that you you have created could be destroyed yeah i uh, and and let me tell you when, having played it through a few times once you hit that halfway point once you count out the cards that you're like that's halfway that tension gets real, real quick. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Cause sure. Because you're, like, you're like, that Joker is in here. Yeah. We've burned through half of the deck, which means this Joker is going to be one of these cards. Yep. Every single card you're like, and it just it just gets worse. Like the more yeah. cards you flip, you're uh, we had one we played where the Joker was the lat was ended up being the bottom card of the deck. Mm hmm. A, it made it every single we got to the last like three or four cards and we're like, God, no, this is the Joker. How how is this the eight of clubs? How is this the and then and then the absolute worst is when there's one card. And you know that that's what it is. And you're just looking at it. The whole scene, you're like, (laughs) okay, we know what's about to happen. Yeah, it's time. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, that's got to be an experience. It's 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 wild. Yeah. No. 
it's knowing it's knowing things are about to get really bad and going, well, can't stop this. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I I had the same thought about uh, kind of the game pandemic mm-hmm. um, where you've got those uh, those outbreak cards that are just in there and then you have to shuffle in the top and then you know how many cards before it actually yeah. starts mattering. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Goodness gracious. Yeah. It's it's wonderful that you've captured that mm-hmm. uh, that sort of feel because that tension is palpable. It's I, I love it, and and it's the fact that you don't feel it at first that yeah. I love. It's a tiny thing that I love because it a it's in the rules that it's in the bottom half of the deck so that it's so that it's impossible that like you start the game with a downfall. Like mm, I, right. it's not really in the spirit of the game. But the other thing is once I once is that's kind of why that rule is in place. But then in play, the act of like, cool, cool, cool. We have a while before I have to even think about that downfall card. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, there's a bunch of cards on the table. Where's the Joker? Like it it adds a real element to it because like you get comfortable, right? Like you Mm -hmm. get into the rhythm of it. You flipped 20 or so cards and you're like, cool, cool, cool. This is going great. Oh, oh, no. Oh no! It was. <laughs> it was going great. Oh, it's great. that's so good. This is my favorite portion of the show, um, where we get to do our fanfic. We get to talk about our our story, how we think that this would go. This is where we mm-hmm. pretend that we played the game, even sure. though we didn't. Um, how do we think that this would play out? We have our we have our villain who is mm-hmm. uh, trying to like what summon an ancient evil or. Steal I all think, the power. I think they're trying to steal all the magic for themselves. Yeah, they're trying to take okay. take control of the magical power of the city. Right. Yeah. Um, we also have um, evil Elon Musk, mm-hmm. regular Elon Musk, mm-hmm. uh, gentrification, ghosts, yeah. spider yep. teen. We've got spider teen. We've got spider ghosts. teen. Oh, uh-huh. you know yeah. what is what? such a interesting thought I just had yes. is... Yeah, you've got these ghosts and and all that sort of stuff. I think, like, the battlefield Mm -hmm. was purposely guided to this location by Mm. this villain in the past. And purposely knowing that it would create these ghosts Mm -hmm. at some point in the future. And knowing that they would be a hindrance to a hero uh, if there ever was one. So you're going to, like, raise a ghost army. It feels like yeah. the hero's gotta 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 enlist these ghosts, right? It feels like that's it's gotta that's gotta be the inversion, right? Right. Yeah. Well, I think I mean we've already established that the library is clearly some kind of magical center mm-hmm. point, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So clearly, I have to go there to discover some kind of ghost powers. Yep. Mm-hmm. To then, and then control you get your the ghost army. Right, and, right, and, um, and, and it, find more of them probably so, in the catacombs. And it feels mm-hmm. so true to like the arc of your character at that point is like the thing you had said was your weakness, was your biggest fear, was that you didn't know how to use your powers, and so mm-hmm. to defeat this villain is to is to learn is to learn the full scope of what you can do. Right, like you've mm-hmm. been using yes. this tiny bit of the iceberg, and now it's time to kind of embrace mm-hmm. the whole of your abilities. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I can, I can imagine the downfall being kind of like um, you defeated one of the the minor villains. Let's say it was the uh, the teenage spider. It had to be spider uh, character. Teen. Yeah, spider uh, teen. So mm-hmm. so the spider teen uh, is defeated, and um, gosh, the like the villain knows that the hero is getting close mm-hmm. to finding the inner sanctum, so to speak, um, and the teen knows where the inner sanctum is. Mm. Um, and so the villain has to come out of the woodworks, right? To, to stop the teen from, from divulging this location somehow. Well, so here's my pitch. Here's yes. my, you defeat the spider teen. Mm-hmm. And then they're, and because this villain is like consolidating all of the magical power and stealing it all for themselves at that moment, that their spider powers are just like ripped from them and they are left basically power. They are left powerless. They're and just regular teen now. And it's just mm. all like, and it's all of the magic is stolen into this one spot, which also sets up spider teens redemption arc, which we've yeah. got to have. 
of right. like they're now in or and and it's my favorite kind of redemption arc which is like I am not I am not here as like a superhero to fight alongside you. I am an ordinary person, but I can still help you and therefore I am going to help you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which means you're now playing Spider Team as the city. I am now Spider Team and it's all <laughs> yeah. I want. Yes. Spider Team represents the city now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is very good. This is very oh good. So, yeah, we'll have it out. Uh, you'll try and steal all of the magic in the world. I will fight you with a ghost army with a spider team by my side. Mm-hmm. It's going to be great. Oh, that, yeah, that sounds fantastic. It's um, very good. I, I want to say the, the reckless capitalist uh, person that is creating uh, like a false hero, so to speak, mm-hmm. goes rogue. For sure. Um, at one point. Has to like just be like I you know I want my own set of power I don't want to be mm-hmm. a puppet anymore, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and then that creates a, an interesting uh, situation between the hero and the villain as well. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot here. There's so it. much. Which like we all did, we did with like one turn. Like <laughs> honestly, yeah. we did all of this and you know like there's oh there's so many threads to pull on. I can't, I so, can't many, even, so so many. I, yeah. Goodness. Yeah. I would have to play it to be able to imagine how robust this gets. Cause mm-hmm. like, my goodness, with just one turn and, and a few prompts, uh, mm-hmm. we've got this like already like epic and it just, comic it just gets arc. bigger. It just gets yeah. bigger and it's, it rules, it rules so hard. <laughs> <laughs> my current game group is three people and we are looking for something to do like on off weeks where we aren't like running our regular game think that i'm gonna tell him to do this yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely oh now, my gosh before we segue into our next segment can I, I i this is just an impromptu thing can i share with you a design story that i think you'll appreciate yes oh absolutely um we were talking about like the process that i went through in making the game and we were talking about like the different roles of the game and can i tell you the absolute hardest part of like translating this game from beyond the rift into anyone can wear the mask it was creating the the title. And once I had the not the title of the game, but like once I had the name, it was a, it was finding the term for the player role that would eventually become the city. Mm. Once I had that role in place, the entire game snapped into place. Yeah. But for the longest time, I knew what they were going to roughly be. I knew there was going to be a hero and I knew there was going to be a city. And I knew there was a role that was essentially everyone else Mm -hmm. for a month. A solid month was of design was sitting on that knowledge and going, what does this person call themselves? Are they the bystander? And I was like, it has to be an active participant. They can't be the sidekick. It can't be the damsel because that's kind of gendered and gross and. Mm -hmm. it feel it doesn't feel right like they need to be like an active participant they need to be empowered they're not really the sidekick they're not really the civilian i was like what is the role that feels right for this Mm -hmm. i was like who is this person and it was just a lightning rod moment of like who is how do i describe everyone in the city well I guess I just called them the city. And then it was like, oh, well, then why aren't you just having them describe all of the places in the city? Why is their role not describing everything? Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, there it is. That's done. And then the tagline of the game came through a hero, a villain in their city. Like it all snapped into place. It just took me a month of being like, are they the bystander? Are they the civilian? Are they Mm -hmm. like, what is this person? The power of a name. Yep. Right. Sometimes it's all. Sometimes it's all about finding the right name and everything exactly. that falls into place. Oh, so good. See, that's why uh, I'm not a good game designer because I can't name things. <laughs> 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 that's why I can't do it. There you go. Ah, uh, uh, well. Finally, let's get into our advancement discussion and uh, take it up a level. Take it up a level. Take it up a level. All right. So in this. Segment we cover advancement and how it works and what it means. What is that like in this game? What is this like? How do things advance? So there's kind of two major advancement points in the game. Um, one of them is after the downfall, and one of them is kind of at the end of the game, which sounds a little counterintuitive, but I'll kind of explain what I mean. 
Uh, the first is like the game like advances in sort of narrative tone after the downfall. Um, what happens is like once you draw that Joker, you shuffle the other Joker into the remaining cards of the deck. If you get to zero cards, you take all the cards that you've set aside, either because the city was caused collateral damage. The hero like saved someone. You pull all those cards and you reshuffle them. And then there are some extra questions you ask as a result of that. But like you shuffle this deck and you shuffle the Joker into it somewhere. It's only about half of the size of the original deck, Mm -hmm. but it's in there somewhere. And the way that the advancement happens here is narration changes primarily for the city. Because now now you're describing a city that has been damaged, right? You're describing yeah. mm-hmm. it is sort of the advancement is you advance from the, the best analogy I have is you advance from the Avengers to Daredevil, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. Daredevil, the series, the Marvel series, like it was a huge plot point that chunks of New York were damaged and like we yeah. were living in the wreckage of that. Mm-hmm. And the stories that were unfolding were unfolding because this big event had happened and this is what happened in a result. Okay. So like, instead of just describing, okay, cool. Yeah. We're at the cave. It's like, we're at the site where that battle happened. This cave is in ruins, right? Like no yeah. one, this is a, this is cordoned off. There's police tape. Like this is a, this is where a fight happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's and no longer des- a nice picnic spot. It's- you describe, you describe a city that is suffering. Mm-hmm. And like the villain describes, how different villains and threats and characters are acting in the wake of this, 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 this event. So instead of a, instead of just here's a bank robbery, it's here's a bunch of people who are trying to like, here's a bunch of like scavengers, right? Here's a gang of super villains that have gotten together and are like, everything's damaged. Easy pickings. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the first major advancement, like phase in the game. The other is at the end of the game. Once the villain has been defeated, Um, I will read off the questions because I think they're very good. But like you end the game by asking a few like closing questions, Mm -hmm. which kind of put a put a bow on things, but also kind of set up if you were to come back to this. Let me find them to the very end of the book. Um, The section's called until next time. And the idea is like we could always, you know, we'll always we'll come. There will be another villain that threatens this city. But until then, um, the the hero answers the question of or we start by asking the hero or the city, how does the city recover from what happened? Then the villain answers, like, how are people mourning who were lost and how does the villain's shadow kind of still haunt the city? And then the hero describes like how they celebrate and how the hero gets to take a moment to rest. Mm. And it all kind of sets up like the city has moved on. It still has changed. And if we were to, and the last line of the book is my favorite, maybe in the whole game, which is when the city needs you again, pick up this rule book and start from the top. Mm -hmm. And so it is the idea that you have set this up. You have put this bow on it and you have said, this is how the city has moved on until there's another villain that is going to threaten you. And then you just start the game over, but you start it over in a place that has changed. And that is sort of the core advancement of the game. Oh, they're so good. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> Ooh. I know. Oh, it's very good. <laughs> it's very, it's very, very good. good. I'm so excited for that. Like, I, okay, full disclosure, while we're recording <laughs> this, I just messaged my group and was like, by the way, we're playing this. And Justin was like, oh, yeah, I already pre-ordered that. We're doing that. <laughs> like, yes. Good. Noted. <laughs> so <laughs> we're uh, apparently going to be playing this game pretty soon. So. Excellent. Oh, I this am very so jealous. This is so much fun. This is so much fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm really excited. I'm really genuinely so excited about this. <laughs> well, is there anything else that you want to uh, throw out there, Jeff, before we uh, take ourselves out of this? No, I think that'll do it. I think that oh. covers about everything. This this has been an absolute joy learning about this game, Jeff. Um, like this has put a like a spotlight of sunshine on my like game library uh that i am so excited to dive into uh at some point so thank yeah. you this was great no thank i'm you. very excited about this as somebody who like doesn't 
interact with like superhero stories. I don't read a lot of comics. Like I've watched the movies and, you know, kind of my ex-husband used to like pause the Daredevil TV show to explain things to me. Um, and so I stopped watching it because <laughs> I was like, if they want me to know, they'll tell me. Uh, yeah, I don't, anyway, I don't, so I don't, like I, don't, I just I don't like that. And I want to like, know right? that I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So just I, I mean, maybe like some of that is just like my experience as a woman of like, mm, I'm going to avoid those spaces. But I'm still like really, really excited about this. Like genuinely, mm -hmm. like I'm excited about this, even Absolutely. though it's not usually my thing. Oh, goodness. It's good. I well, know. Uh, Jeff, do you want to go ahead and remind everyone where they can find you online and what sort of other things that you're working on? Absolutely. You can find all of my work at jeffstormer.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Party of One Pod. You can go to uh, partyofonepodcast.com to learn about Party of One, which is a two-player role-playing game actual play. You can head to oneshotpodcast.com, the same website where you find character creation cast mm -hmm. and find all my fantasy children. Or you can go to jeffstormer.itch.io slash mask and pick up anyone can wear the mask. Um, we it is it is probably by the time this episode drops, I will say I'm not going to give it any definitive date to it because mm -hmm. uh, we're working on our own pace. And I didn't do a Kickstarter for this game because I didn't <sighs> feel like I wanted to stress myself out. So stuff mm -hmm. will happen with it when it happens. But uh by the, in the near future, it will be a version. There will be a new version of the game with like fully interior art. The mm. the version on itch.io right now has layout and a front cover. But the but we've already raised enough money to pay for all of our inter interior art. So we will have an inversion with cool interior art and it's going to look beautiful. Oh, it already wonderful. looks beautiful. Uh, the layout artist and uh, artist crushed it so thoroughly that it already looks incredible. Um, but yeah, you can go pick that up at jeffstormer.itch.io slash mask. Mm -hmm. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to everyone for listening. Yeah, we'll see you next time. This series was one of my favorites. Uh, Jeff is such a delightful personality and really has an amazing energy as an individual as well. Uh, absolutely check out this game if you haven't yet. It really feels like something special, uh, and I mean that so much. Um, as for our call to action this week, please remember to stay safe if you need to get out of the house. Uh, you are important, and we're getting to the beginning of the end of this whole uh, fiasco of a year, so to speak. Uh, continue wearing a mask in public, even if you've already gotten the vaccine, please. Uh, it will, at the very least, uh, help people feel more at ease, uh, myself included. Um, and, and we are in it for the long haul, and we are going to get through this together. So uh, let's stay safe, please. Um, other things to keep in mind, as usual lately... Check out my A Tale of Twinkle and Awe stream using the Chimera RPG this Friday at 7.30 p.m. Central Time at twitch.chimera.games and hang out with me and five amazing players as we see how magical girls, superheroes, fantasy, and horror genres all mix together. It'll be a really good time. Finally, before we let you go for the week and get to those credits, show blurbs, and as is custom on the last episode of the series, The Outtakes, remember to leave us a rating or a review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, or wherever you can leave reviews for podcasts. They really help us out and really make us feel fantastic whenever we read them. Thank you to everyone who has already left us reviews in the past. You are all amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For now, I'm going to turn down the studio lights and get ready to segue us right into the ending of the show and those sweet, sweet outtakes. Take care of yourselves and each other, everyone. Have an excellent couple of weeks before we return February 1st. And remember... Keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time.
Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like All My Fantasy Children. Each week, Aaron Katana Saez and Jeff Stormer take a listener-submitted prompt and, using some of their favorite tabletop RPGs, create an original fantasy character. Along the way, they share laughs, stories, verbal hugs, and populate a shared universe one story at a time. I did it. Nice. Got Nailed it. it. Nailed it. Uh, and we're done. Th- and we're done. That's what we do. That's here. great. Well, That's we're... a wrap. That's it. That's All it. right. That, this is the first time I've done the countdown with my new setup, and uh, it's it's delightful. <laughs> is uh, it really I'm more, that different? I'm, I'm more bassy in my ears because oh. uh, of the audio feedback. Uh, from the Zoom, so I'm like, ooh, so that's, it. that's what it's like. You're like, this is what it sounds like for everybody else. I know, it's nice. <laughs> I mean, not to toot my own horn, but it's nice. It's buttery. <laughs> mm, ah, sorry, my thing like suddenly won't scroll. Okay, I think <laughs> my battery in my mouse is gonna die. Oh, and I just shined it in my eyes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Don't, I'm a professional. It's great. <sighs> Oh no! Ah. <laughs> I you said I. Ryan said stop, I, and you were like stop. Yes, <laughs> I was like okay. Well, right, because I'm just now looking. Am I on the discussion episode? Yeah, I might not. Am I? I am. Yes. yes. Okay. I thought that when you said stop, and we were just going to segue hard, and then anything. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clap, and then I'm going to say my go for it. Outro piece. Sure. And then you could just stitch that right in. <laughs> I am so sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> oh. All right. Now we can stop. Now I stop the report. Stop. E. I am recording. My recording is also happening. In my ears, I can hear my voice. <laughs> <laughs> in my of. ears, uh, I can hear my voice as well, and it's deeper than. Hey, it I also hear voice. your voice. What? I hear yours Whoa. too. What? No way. It's like oh. we're doing a podcast. Oh my god! <laughs> wow, we're nailing it. <laughs> Almost what? Like three, four years? In? What? How many years is it? Three. I've just been know. faking what it this time? whole time. Ryan, I've just been Ryan. faking it this whole time. I never heard a word that you said this entire run. I've just, just been guessed. saying, just been guessing the right words to say at the right times. <laughs> Same. <laughs> it's so good to finally hear your voice, right? I know. This is strange. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be able to do this now. This is, this is wild. Oh, man. Uh, this ruins the whole format. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, goodness. Ooh. 
I will do a five before. count, and then I will be serious. Seriously. Serious. Serious artist. Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember here come the fingers. <laughs> every single time. In my head. Every single time you put your fingers up to count. Here, here my brain says, here come the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay. We already, we already did the five count though. Okay. The fingers already happened. They already happened. <laughs> <laughs> the fingers are here. Yep. Okay. As usual. Uh first we uh plop plop. All right, I screwed it up for a second. Wow. Right. Here we go again. Um So, yes, we love reading them. If you could leave them on Apple Podcasts, Mm -hmm. Stitcher, anywhere else that you leave your podcast reviews, that would be great. This is a Um, better Oh. Oh. Okay. Hold on. Go sit back, and I'll be out in a couple minutes, okay? We're almost done. We're almost done. Could you help me with this? I I can't. It's a battle with... with Oh, my God. Yes, he's painting stuff. No, see, you mean see. You need to defeat them if there's many things you have to suffer. And then throw the many things at the little <laughs> total. Okay. So I guess we're uh I guess we're playing Kirby. Need to so him. so this is my play by post uh of Kirby uh in Dreamland for the Super oh, Nintendo. I see. Um we just uh defeated this uh dinosaur monster that was shooting out blocks. Now we've got a creepy angler fish. So okay, creepy, creepy but will fish. Kirby leave us a review? I don't think so. No. Kirby's kind of stickler. Oh, it shoots out energy bolts as well as uh, little starfish. You have to suck in the starfish and then shoot them at that. <laughs> oh, no. I've only got a couple more hits left. Oh, he stopped. Now he's going to shoot a starfish. No, you tricked me. Here's the starfish. Come into my mouth. There we go. Kirby is such a weird game. Yeah, it's... I don't... Now I have to fight a sun and a moon drawing. I've been playing a lot of Among Us with the kids, which, like, I love, (laughs) but also involves me as, like, a little jelly bean wandering around potentially murdering my children. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. And so, like, we were playing last night. Um, They were over at their dad's, and I was playing. And... um. Nate's like, follow me and watch me do whatever. So, like, I followed him and then I killed him because I was the imposter. And then I get a text from oh, no. my ex that was like, You played that kid like a fiddle. And I was like, I know. And Nate just texts me, How dare you? <laughs> How dare. And I was like, That's parenting, is just wandering around murdering your children in video games. I mean, that's fair. To, to be completely fair, they do it to me as well. Mm hmm. That is also fair. Okay, these banana moons I cannot get because the sun is too fast. Okay. And you're gonna, the sun poops out another sun fireball, and then you have to grab it and then shoot it at the moon, which I, I never thought that would be a sentence I would have to say. I was say. gonna say, there's a, there's a sentence. No, come on. Oh, God. No, I've only got one hit left. Take that moon. Oh. Take that moon. <laughs> Well, now the sun's just flopping around, pooping out more suns. Uh, at least this isn't, at least this is predictable. Oh, gets to the top of his flight path, and then he comes back down. Oh, I exploded him again. Oh, the painter is very upset, and is trying a giant cloud brain with an eyeball thing with spikes. I don't like it. Okay. So this one shoots out babies. And then lightning. I have to catch the babies and then shoot the babies as stars at the the mommy cloud with an eyeball. These are going to make weird outtakes. I don't know. He's just shooting all sorts of babies. No! Oh, shoot. I got about 15 minutes before my brother and his dogs get here. Okay. Too. Just so you know. (laughs) Before the chihuahua arrives. (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, get around. Suck in the baby. One more hit. I exploded him. Come on, painter. Oh, 
And then the painter came at me, swatting at me with his weird paintbrush. <laughs> ah. <laughs> How am I supposed to how am I supposed to hurt you? How about you do your clouds and then and then you destroy him? How about you suck him? Oh. Nope, that didn't work. <laughs> okay, so he's just they're just flopping around like Hey, I shot my little blue dude at him and he exploded. That was a tough one. Okay, all right, head on out, and I gotta finish the recording. Oh, good lord. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about Kids that. Kids these days. I know. I get him hooked on the switch to keep him quiet, and then he's like, I can't beat this. Yep. Well, you know what? I almost couldn't either. Okay, what happened? All right. Into the call to action. Episode happens. <laughs> Closing music. Closing music. All right, here we go. Oh, that was a long cold open. All right. All right, and just that, just remember, remember, at no point say we're say we're gonna we're gonna stop because I will just hit that stop button <laughs> and that audio is done. We'll take it oh, seriously. No. <laughs> Be like, this is exported. I'm, I will leave the call. It's just <laughs> Jeff. What is it? Jeff, oh my come god. Back. Oh, okay. Jeff, oh my god. Well, let's we'll let's just stop reuse. and talk about this thing. Where did Jeff go? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say that that my face hurts from smiling so much from the last episodes? I'm so um, happy about that. That makes me so excited. I'm like, happy. I mean, oh. that tells me either that you smiled a lot or that lately you haven't been smiling very much <laughs> and working out those muscles. Or both. I don't know. Either way, glad something, I could Something help. to ponder. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get that workout in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got two friends in real life that I play games with on the regular as well. When when we were able to do that, this would be okay. Perfect. You don't oh need God. to brag about how you have two real life friends, Ryan. Okay, look at look at <laughs> J, look at JD Rockefeller over here with two <laughs> friends, <laughs> two friends in real life. Even God, that I okay. I know that Whatever. that that whole like uh, uh, this is a huge side note. That whole vernacular of in real life compared to on the internet. Like my internet friends are people in real life. I, I consider right. them friends that are actual friends. I know. Like, I think we're as a generation, like, we're getting away from that. Because, mm -hmm. like, that used to be, like, how my parents would be like, like a oh, thing that you said. And, and, now it's kind and of I was like, no, they're my real friends. They just happen to live out of state. Like, it's no different than people yeah. I went to college with who now live in Michigan or Arkansas. Like, those yeah. are my real friends, too. Yeah. Just because this is, I this is you my, know, see them once at conventions. My internet like, vernacular. Right. Like, 100%. Ryan and I have only met in real life, like, three times. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and we're bitter enemies. Yeah. It's, it's true. I hate him. Absolutely. As, Absolutely. Is, as is tradition for every two-person podcasting duo, you 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 are secretly, you secretly bitterly hate it. You hate each other. This is yeah, why Aaron and I, mean, I record in separate rooms, is because we can't be near each other. Right. right. Because he it's knows in our what contract. he did. He knows what he did. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> oh, goodness. You like, oop, I keep whacking my microphone. I'm sorry, Ryan. Uh, no, is somebody. Okay, now, now you can, can stop, stop Jeff. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you for confirming that I can stop. <laughs>